One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're here because we need God. How many of y'all need God? Amen. Amen. How many, not, how many y'all need instruction? Say, so, you know, I need God to tell me what to do. I'm not trying to figure out things on my own. I want the help from God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. Thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. The church said amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Amen. Praise God. Yes, here we are. God is good. God is faithful. Amen. All right. Okay. So it's Wednesday night, and we're always preaching on faith. And so we're going to preach, uh, you know, this is Faith Academy, so we just want to grow by the word, and we're going to do what God's called us to do. I'm going to preach this message tonight entitled, God's Divine Timing. God's Divine Timing. Uh, and this, this right here is very important because there's a lot of peace that God has for the body of Christ. How many of y'all believe God wants you to live in peace? Amen. Amen. He wants you to live in peace. But this world wants to do what? Disrupt your peace. Amen. They want to get you up, you know, uptight or get you overly concerned about things and even your own life. But God wants us to live in this place where his peace is flowing in our lives, flowing like a river. But in order to be in that peace, you got to understand God's divine timing. And so let's go to Ecclesiastes 3.1. Ecclesiastes 3.1. Um, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Stop right there. And so if I'm understanding this, there is a season and a time for every purpose. you got to pay attention to the word purpose. It's God's purpose, not our own. Sometimes we don't see what God sees. Amen? But we've got to trust him. How many of you have been in a situation where you wanted it to change already? You wanted that thing to change yesterday. But sometimes God doesn't change it. And so there's something that you're supposed to be learning. There's something you're supposed to be made aware of. So to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Let's look at this in the message translation. He says, there's an opportune time to do things. Come on, man. Boy, you, you want to get this because if you can get this, you won't be wasting a lot of time. How many of y'all want to get out of that to where you're like, Okay, I appreciate God's grace, but I'm not trying to have no, I'm not trying to waste no more time. I want everything that I'm doing to be in sync with God and a part of his divine plan for my life. Amen. I don't want to have things just, uh, I'm just out of step or I'm, you know, going too fast, going too slow. And if we understand this, there's an opportune, so there's that right time. The anointing is flowing when God says it's supposed to. How many know you can't jumpstart the anointing? You can't put the anointing on something that God hadn't released you to do. And that's what a lot of people are doing. They're getting out there ahead of God sometimes, and they're trying to get God's blessing to go on something that God did not ordain for them to do. And so in order for me to not fall into that category, I've got to trust God. I've got to know that he knows when I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen? There's an opportune time to do things. A right time. Well, if there's a right time, how many know there's a wrong time? See? If there's a right time, there's also a wrong time. And, but we want to know that God's never going to instruct us to do something at the wrong time. Oh, come on, man. I'm, I'm just here preaching on a Wednesday night. 
God is never going to instruct us to do something at the wrong time. There's no chance with God. There's no gambling. There's no none of that. God knows exactly what he's doing. But what happens is people get themselves in trouble because they get ahead because now they're antsy. Amen. Come on. You ever heard? Yeah, there you go. That word anxious. And we are not to be anxious. You know, uh, matter of fact, I'll give you a bonus scripture. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. Uh, the King James says, be not careful, but one of them translations says anxious. And so careful in this uh, King James mean, means anxious. But um, what is it? Oh, NLT. Maybe try NLT. Uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about it, everything. I mean, so that's good. But even let's, let's just stay with the King James so that I can get that, that word careful. I'll, I'll explain it to you. So be careful for nothing. And so that means anxious. Be not, don't be anxious about anything. But he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, then look how it adds, with thanksgiving. See, sometimes people don't understand the connection with prayer and thanksgiving. And so whenever you pray, you got to thank him for it. Amen. You got to thank him for it. And so with prayer and thanksgiving. And so uh, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. And then what you're going to get is peace. He says in verse seven, and the peace of God shall comfort your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus or the peace of peace that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so if I'm looking at this, I've got to understand that God doesn't want me to be antsy, overexcited, nervous. Any, he, he's got a place for me that is like right there in the middle. It's like, well, I'm not worried about it. I'm not fearful about anything. I'm just trusting God. And so you don't want to be ahead of God or behind him. Amen. Now, this is also something that people have to learn. There are people that get anxious and they get ahead of God, but then there's other people. God is telling them to do something and they don't. And so they're behind God. And so God is like, OK, now's the time. But then you're like, hey, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, there's a season. Remember, I gave you the scripture, an appointed time, a season. Well, you could miss it because you are either ahead or you are behind. And we don't want to be like that as people living in the earth. You don't want to be ahead of God or behind him. You want to be right in step with his flow. How many of y'all want that kind of confidence? To where every day you say, oh, I'm right where God wants me to be. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't end up anywhere. I'm right where God wants me to be at this particular time. Matter of fact, God knew that I'd be right here at this time before he ever put me in my mama's womb. Boy, where would all the stress and all that stuff go when people start to understand that? Like, I'm not just out here trying to make it. I'm not just trying to make it in this life. I'm not trying to figure this thing out. God's already got this thing orchestrated beautifully. It's just a matter of me submitting to it. And so you don't, once again, you don't want to be ahead of God or behind him. You want to be right in step with his flow. And so when I like to use the word flow because it's a flow, it's like effortlessly. You ever had those days where it just seemed like everything is clicking? Everything is just falling in place. Everything is just working. Then you have some other days where it seems like nothing is working. Well, with God, it's always working. God never has any days where it ain't working. With God, every day is flowing. Everything is happening. And so we want to be in tune with that. Now, in order for me to get to that place, this will require, this requires an unwavering trust. So I've got to get into that place where I have an unwavering trust. So this requires an unwavering trust 
that can only be developed through intimate fellowship. You can't have an unwavering trust in God without intimate fellowship. Intimate fellowship, that's close fellowship, but that's also intentional. So what does that mean? You're going to have to set out time. Amen? You're going to have to set out time to pay attention to God, to get a hold of God. You can't just have a haphazard relationship with God and think that you're going to, you know, be able to really trust him. You've got to, no, no, I'm going to carve out time. I'm, I'm going to make sure that before I get into my day, I'm going to spend time with God. I want to get a hold of God. I want to spend this time because this is going to give me the trust that I need so that I can live this life right in sync with God, right in that flow. So this requires an unwavering trust that can only be developed through intimate fellowship. Intimate fellowship is not going to church. Amen? Intimate fellowship is not uh, just reading the daily verse that comes up on the Bible app. The Bible app pops up and you're like, woo. Bam, I got, my, I got my daily word. I'm good to go. No, you're not. That you, can't, you can't just reduce your relationship with God to that and expect that you're going to trust him. No, you're going to end up trusting yourself and then you're going to be calling on him for help when you place yourself in that position of making all the decisions and then you start making wrong ones. Amen? So is there a shortcut to this? No. Pastor, I'm just so busy. Whose problem is that? That ain't my problem. I've told you before, you're going to have to unbusy yourself. If you get too busy to spend time with God, you need to move some stuff off your schedule. You got too many things. And pretty soon, what you don't understand is the enemy is mounting up an attack. The enemy is mounting up, man. He sees and he's like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. You, mm, I like that. You're real busy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then he's going to catch you when you have no armor. You have no armor because you've been too busy, too caught up in life. And then that's when people get sniped. And then they are forced to listen. Because how many know you can't be too busy when you're laid on your back? Amen? And so... For me to trust God this way, this requires an unwavering trust that can only be developed through intimate fellowship. Go to John 10, 27. John 10, 27. Jesus says, my sheep. You see that? These are, you know, we're Christians and we say we belong to God. Well, this is what Jesus says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Man. Boy, now God... He'll, you know, he knows everything about you. But this is referencing intimacy that is developed through relationship. And so my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And look at this. What else does it say? Oh, man. So my sheep, first of all, Jesus is taking ownership. So in so many words, he's saying there's a bunch of sheep out there, but they ain't all mine. Oh, I can't get an amen right there. There's a bunch of sheep out there, but they ain't all mine. There's a bunch of sheep out there that say they're my sheep, but they're not my sheep because my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and then guess what? They follow me. How do I know I'm his sheep? I'm following him. I'm hearing his voice, and I'm following him. And so I know them. And so Jesus is saying, I know them, and that comes from the Greek word, or actually in the Greek, it means to know absolutely. So this means God knows everything about you. And you're his sheep. He knows what makes you upset before you get upset. He knows how you're wired. Amen. You ever met those people that, you know, they may say, well, I'm just wired a little different. But God knows that. He knows everything about you. He knows what's important. He knows how to motivate you. He knows how to correct you. He knows how to speak a language that you can hear because sometimes people are too hard-headed and they can't hear. 
Oh, come on. Amen. They, you get, come on, you can get just so busy or just so whatever. And uh, Let me use this word. Some people can get too stubborn to listen. But God knows how to say that word. That uh, get right through. They say, oh, yes, Lord. And so, and that's because he knows you. And so he knows us absolutely. And then it also says, they follow me. Now, this is important to understand. They follow me. Well, they follow me because they trust my direction. People don't follow God because they don't trust his direction. And the reason that a person wouldn't trust God's direction is because they haven't spent enough time fellowshipping, getting to know. You don't just trust perfect strangers. You don't just trust people. You know, it's just like here. You need to have some evidence that they are worthy of trust. Amen. Come on. You don't just you know, your, your, your child's first time ever learning, you know, you, you went through that driving lesson and you taught them and you were, okay, and you got back home and then you said, here, go to the store. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> it's going to take some time because sometimes you're riding with them kids and you're teaching them how to drive and you, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, you like exercising some prayer and, and faith and it seemed like stuff was a lot closer. Amen. Come on, y'all. Remember that where you like, it seemed like all of my kids did the same thing. It seemed like they just wanted to be on the right side of the road. But I'm like, you guys are too close to this car. You guys, I'm, I'm trying to be calm. Then it, pretty soon it's like, um, do you see this? <laughs> but after a while, you trust them. Right? And I remember I used to do this with Deja. I'd, She'd have to drive, I'd make her drive to school. And then I'd be like, okay, you got it? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and lay back and, and I'd fake like I went to sleep. I wasn't asleep, but I'd lay that seat back and just act like I'm not paying attention to what she's doing. But then, you know, that didn't happen until a while, amen, you know what I mean? But now that's to give, help her have confidence that, yeah, dad trusts me. That we're going to make it. Well, these are things that develop. So when you spend time with God, you will trust him. But if you don't, you won't. And then so what will happen is you will be living life according to your own Bible plan. Come on. You will pick and choose what you want to meditate, what you want to live by, how you want to structure your life. But it's all going to be based on you and your tolerance level. It's not going to be based on God. And so you'll keep that relationship in a box. But if you step into that level of intimacy that God wants you to step into, then now you'll hear his voice and he'll know you and you'll follow him and you'll say, Lord, I trust you. You know, I don't need any explanation. I'm just going to follow you. I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do. Now, look at John, we're in John 10, but look at uh, verse 5. Just skip up to verse 5, John 10, 5. And this is another example. He's talking about, you know, the sheep and coming in a different way and things like this. But this is very important. And a stranger will they not follow. So I just gave you uh, whatever that verse was, 27, where we follow him. But then here's another one. And a stranger... They will not follow. And so, what does that mean? It's like, oh, that ain't Jesus. That ain't my, that ain't my, my master. That ain't my shepherd. And, and people get to follow and stuff that's not God. But if you're his sheep, the Bible says, a stranger will they not follow. A stranger will they not follow. And so they know not the voice of strangers. Now, to help you with this, fellowship with God protects you from deception. That's it. Fellowship with God protects you from deception. 
People don't have to get themselves in bad situations if they would just fellowship with God. If they would just take and really prioritize their walk with God, then now God would be involved in every single decision that they make. Listen, you won't sign anything, you won't go anywhere, you won't buy anything, you won't do anything that won't be good for you. And this is foolproof. Well, how do you know that it's not going to turn out bad for you, Pastor? Because I'm in fellowship with God. And God's not following me. Amen? God's not following me. See, that's, that's where you, you don't want to be in this habit of leading and doing stuff. And then later on, God come along and, and bless this. And no, Lord, where, where, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to buy? What do you want, where do you want me to work? All these type of things. And now you're following him. And guess what? You're following him into any situation you follow God into. You can rest comfortably, comfortably to know that God's got it. So if there looks like there's going to be some opposition, but you know, man, I follow God up in here. Then you can rest confidently and know that he's going to work it out. Now, there is grace where people just make all these decisions and, and they make, we'll talk about it in a minute, but they make decisions out of their emotions. And see, following God does not feel a certain way. There are no feelings associated with it. You know what I mean? You don't feel in your spirit. There just comes a time through intimacy with God where you just have a knowing. And you just have a, uh, yep, I know what I'm supposed to do. And when it's God's plans... They always work out. There, there's no uh, trap door or no, you know, secret maze or no whatever. It just works out because it's God's plan. And so a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And so we don't listen to people just telling us to do whatever. I want to get that from God. Amen. Go to Isaiah 30, 21. And this is what God is doing. He's making this available, but this can only come through fellowship. Now, let me, let me give you some insight on this. I've taught this for some time, but, you know, what we want to do is we want to be able to, to, to discern the voice of God. Because there's always three voices. There's your voice, there's the devil's voice, and then there's God's voice. And so you got to be able to discern who's speaking. Well, he says here in Isaiah 30, 21, and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So I'm getting this instruction from God. And my ears are going to hear a word behind me. Now, don't you think the devil knows the scripture? Y'all in here with me? The devil knows the scripture more than most Christians, if not every single Christian, actually. And so what he is going to do is he's going to try to make you think it was God telling you to do something. Now, you had not been in fellowship with God enough and so you think, oh, I, you know, and that's where people do stuff like, well, I feel like the Lord is, I feel like, see, they're gambling. Come on, y'all. When you start talking about, I feel like the Lord is leading me to do this, you're gambling. Because when you know it's God, you're not saying, I feel like God is, you're saying, God told me to do this. So I'm doing this. And if you don't have that type of clarity, that's okay. Don't make no decision. Go back into your prayer. Go back into your fellowship with God. Because with God, even sometimes, if it maybe doesn't make sense to you, you're still going to have peace. Because you're going to get an internal peace that is God. And so thy ears shall hear a word behind thee. And so this is what God is saying. You're going to hear it. Now, is this for everybody or is this for a select group, select few? 
See, God's no respecter of persons. So you can hear God like this. But you have to train yourself. You have to train yourself to know that it's God and it's not you. See, God's voice is not attached to your desires. Come on. God's voice is not attached to your emotions. Rarely does God speak when you're frustrated. If he speaks when you're frustrated, he's pro it's probably going to be some type of warning. It ain't going to be no, I need the answer. Okay, you got it. Here's the answer. That's not God. So what happens is people, because of their emotions, their soul, their mind, will, and their emotions, you know, you could want something to happen so bad that you can actually receive a scripture from yourself. And you could receive a scripture and say, man, there it must be the will of God. He confirmed it with his word. No, you just happen to know some scriptures and you pull one that makes sense with what you want. And you say, I know it's the Lord because they got the word on it. That's not how it works. So with God, there's no emotions attached. A lot of times when you're antsy and you're ready for a situation to change, God won't change it. Oh, come on. You're ready. You're like, man, I need this to happen. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, and then, but God won't change it. Because he doesn't want you moving based upon emotions, based upon feelings. He wants you moving based on direction, divine timing. These are things that, you know, there was... Man, for so long in our other building, I was like, Lord, I'm just, I was ready to go for years before we moved. I was convinced, oh, this is, we're surely moving now. And he didn't give me nothing. Because it was my emotions. It wasn't divine timing. And he spared me, now his grace is sufficient, so, you know, Fortunately for me, I wasn't too stubborn to just get out there and do something. So I was able to just, you know, okay, let me back it up. Let me wait on God. Go to Isaiah, I'm mean, excuse me, Psalm 32, 8. Psalm 32, 8. He says, I will instruct thee. So instruction, that's like imagine a teacher, a professor. They are instructing you. Well, instruction often has steps. It's like doing math problems. And sometimes, you know, you get to messing around with that and you don't get the answer right. Like, what did I do? Well, a good teacher will back you through it and then you'll find out, see, you skipped that step right there. There was one step. Well, he says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way in which thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with my eye. He's going to guide you with his eye because that's an all-seeing eye. That's an eye that sees above. Right now, you don't see everything. But God does. What you see is what you want to see. And sometimes the things that we don't want to see, we can actually train ourselves to be blind. Oh, come on, man. We can train ourselves to be blinded to things that God wants us to see because we have a desire, we want something or we want this change or whatever it is. And so there could be warning signs, but we become blinded intentionally because we trained ourselves not to see what we don't want. You don't want to live like that because that's going to end up being bad for you in the long run. Amen? And so you want to be in that place where I'm just doing what God tells me. Where are you going? Wherever God tells me. How do you know it's God? Oh, because I spend time with him. I fellowship with him. I know him. Now, here's another thing about fellowshipping with God. If you're, oh, man, this is powerful stuff. If you're not experiencing this in your life, 
where you are fellowshipping with God and God is telling you stuff that you don't always want to hear. If that's not happening, if all you're getting from God is everything good, everything, you just, you just, I'm just getting wonderful downloads from the Lord. It's just beautiful. You're not getting any, he's never telling you stuff you don't want to hear. Now, I'm going to be the one to tell you that might not be God. Because if you're fellowshipping with God, think about this. He is your father. Now, if you're a good parent, you raise that kid, but it ain't always going to be stuff they want to hear. But it's going to be stuff that's good for them. That's the best for them. So if you're in a relationship with your heavenly father, but you're never getting him, he's never correcting you, he's never telling you, like, no, we're not going to do it that way. Or you need to ease back. You're a little too, you know, oh no, I never get that. All I get from God is just, you know, everything I want, he just, you know. See, that now you have been duped and you're living your life according to your own Bible plan. But when you're in real fellowship with God, he's going to correct you. He's going to tell you things that you didn't really want to hear. You will have ideas. You are, sometimes you'll come up with a game plan. And I, I've actually thought out stuff, even dealing with the church or how it's going to handle this and had different things and thought it out from step A to Z and, you know, thought it out. And then, you know, he quickly said, we're not doing that. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Amen? Amen? Now, I'm telling you, that's characteristic of a genuine relationship with God because you don't know everything. So you're going to think stuff. You're going to think sometimes this is, yeah, this, this is right. This is what I should do because you don't know everything. So if you're never getting God coming in saying, no, that ain't it, then you might want to question that uh, living life according to your own Bible plan. You want to back up off of that thing because when it's God, it's going to be some things that sometimes you're challenged or you don't get to do what you wanted to do right when you wanted to do it. Things don't change right when you want them to change all the time. It's, it's stuff like that. And so he's going to guide you with that all-seeing eye. Go to Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man, including woman, are ordered by the Lord. So you see that. So now the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That is not negotiated. Okay, the steps of a good man or see, me and God, we, what we're doing is we're coming up with a plan. See, I'm going to go ahead and get with God so we can come up with a plan. God's not coming up with any plans. God is not saying, Let, let's come on, let's reason together. Let's get together on this. No. The only time that's mentioned is when he says, though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. So let me tell you, I, you can receive forgiveness, but when it comes to planning and things like that in your life, it is, God is ordering the steps of a good man, including woman. He's ordering those steps. He's not getting in no situation where, let's figure this out together. Let's me and you get together and let's, let's see what we can come up with. That is not God. God is saying, I'm going to tell you what to do, and you do it, and you'll be blessed. If you don't do it, you're not going to be blessed. Amen? And so, now, here's the thing. God's timing doesn't always line up with your feelings or emotions. Man. So now, I'm, in, I'm out here, man, I'm trying to learn some stuff tonight, and I'm, I want to get myself into a situation where I can do better. Well, Take this as a note. God's timing doesn't always line up with your feelings or your emotions. 
There have been things that I wanted to happen and I was so disappointed that it didn't happen. But then later on I realized, oh, thank you, Lord, that would have been terrible. But you knew that. How come I didn't see that? Because I don't have an all-seeing eye. I can only see what God reveals. But God is not waiting on revelation. God is the giver of revelation. And so it's up to me to trust him. And so his timing doesn't always line up. You know, you, you could be in a situation now. Let me tell you this. If you ever get to where you're feeling weary or you're feeling like, man, I'm just, you know, you, you almost feel like, man, I've had it with this situation. You're weary in it all this type of stuff, then th let me just, just mess, mess up your, your, your faith understanding. God ain't about to change that. Oh, come on. So what, do, what am I saying? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in this place. Now, the, you got to think about this. These feelings that are not in the spirit, they're not coming from the spirit. And so, the fruit of the Spirit is patience, long-suffering, things like that. If I'm uptight, frustrated, anxious, I'm, ah, this needs to change. If God is a loving God, why would he change it? Because he can't change, he, well, he could, but he's not going to change that because I'm not in the Spirit. I'm, I'm in my flesh. I'm in my emotions. I'm, you know, I'm in this situation. That's why I tell people, you've got to find joy in where you are. Whatever your stage of life is, you've got to find joy in that. You've got to find uh, a fond appreciation. And it's like, wow, I'm just, you know... I'm just so frustrated with this situation. I'm tired of showing up over here, man, with these people. God ain't going to change it. Oh, pastor, I'm deflated. God ain't going to change it. Why? Why would he want you stepping into another situation, another situation that your feelings have led you to? And then you're going to try to make it spiritual later. People run from one situation and get into a worse one. Amen? And so God's timing doesn't always line up with your feelings or emotions. And, and the reason this is, is God knows details we haven't discovered yet. So he knows details about stuff. So you see something Let's say it's a job. You could see it and all you see is the good, but God knows there's something else over there. There's a back end situation that you don't know anything about. And so now God, out of his love for you, he's protecting you. Amen. Just like he would protect us as a church. There are situations where I'm thinking, man, surely this would be great. But everything could look great. But then God knows something that you don't know. Why? Because your mind is not able to go up there where that revelation is. See, God doesn't just let you go up there with him. Now you see everything too. Think about that. You're just going to sit up there with God and now you're going to see on his level. No. Your mind, your man, your head would pop. And so we have to trust him. And so we stay in that place where I'm, I'm humbly dependent upon him. But what I do know is I know him. I'm, I'm in fellowship with him. And I trust him enough to go wherever he leads me. And I've learned that I don't need any explanation because if I'm waiting on him to explain it to me, then that's going to cause a delay and I can miss my season. And I can miss my timing. Well, God, why didn't this happen? Because you were so busy being analytical. You're so busy waiting to fully understand. See, understanding God is not trusting God. 
That's why Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. So me trusting God is not understanding him. It's just simply I'm trusting him. And so God knows details that we've yet to consider. We, we didn't even know it was there. It was like, whoa, I never even thought of that. I never thought of that being a possible situation. And then that goes good and bad. Sometimes there's a situation for you that's good and you can't see it. Because you can't see everything. So you're thinking, this ain't it. But then if you are patient and you learn to listen to God, because a lot of people have walked away from a good situation. They've walked away from something that was about to get really good because their feelings led them. And what are your feelings designed to do? They're designed to please you. Now, some people may say, well, what about bad feelings? You know, when I'm, I'm feeling sad, that's not to please me. Yes, it is. Oh, come on. See, your feelings, even if you call them bad feelings, well, I'm upset. I'll, I'll be the one that just says this stuff that, that way if you got to be mad at anybody, be mad at me. You're upset like that because you're selfish. And all you see is the effect on yourself. You don't see the bigger plan. You don't see that God could be doing something greater. You don't see that God could actually be really having you go through a little something for the benefit of someone else. So now when I take me off my mind, my feelings don't dominate me. Amen? And so God knows all these details. And so what we want to do is we want to be in that situation where I appreciate where I am. You need to be able to assess your life and you need to be able to say, you know what? I appreciate where I am in my life right now. I appreciate what I have. I appreciate the people that I have around me in my life right now. I am not longing for this next level because my next level, the next level God has for you, your next level will require training that can only be gained at your current level. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Your next level requires training that can only be acquired at your current level. So if I don't get trained up properly where I am, I'm not ready to go where I want to go. So what do I got to do? Pump the brakes. I got to look at, let me, let me appreciate this. Amen. You want a new job or something like that? Then appreciate what you got. Learn, Lord, let me see what, I, what I'm supposed to see over here. There's something going on. And then appreciate, and then evaluate your words. Do a word audit. Are you offering words of thanksgiving? Or are you offering words of complaint? See? Complaining doesn't produce success. Amen? Complaining doesn't produce change. You know what complaining does? It produces the same that you've been having. So what you complain about is what you keep getting because a complaint is really a prophecy in disguise. Ah, oh. you better stop letting the devil use you to prophesy over yourself. Amen. Go to Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. So he says, I mean, excuse me, uh, I gave you 13, 8, but I meant 13, 5. 13, 5. I wrote down 13, 8. So let your conversation be without covetousness. So there's no longing. No, what if your conversation is like that? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content. That word content is very powerful. Be content with such things as you have. So just another side note, uh, 1 Timothy, I think it's 1 Timothy 6, 6. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And so I'm to learn to be content with what I have. And so my conversation is without covetousness. And so I'm not talking about what I want. My, I wish I had this. Or which, because when people do that, 
then now there's uh, a tendency to underappreciate what you have. And so let's say you want God to bless you with a new house. Well, don't spend all day talking about a new house. When you're in your house and you're talking about a new house, what do you think your house is feeling? <laughs> I mean, you just don't care about me. What am I, just, what am I, a shack? <laughs> right? But you got to appreciate it. Don't even be thinking about that next house. Amen? And so let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will, this is all you need to know. This is what Jesus said. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We started out with my sheep know my voice. Now we're talking about God is saying, you know, Jesus is saying, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so what you want to do as you put a practice, put these things to practice in your life. Understand, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. I'm going to have what I'm supposed to have when I'm supposed to have it. And when God gives it, nobody can take it. But if I get out there and I try to push a timeline, come on somebody, if I get out there and try to push an agenda or do whatever, then now I better be able to fend for self totally. But if I can trust God and say, I'm with him, I'm obeying him, that way you never have to worry about something being disrupted. You won't lose anything that God gave you. Because if God gave it to you, God is the one that's your keeper. But if it's everything you've done on your own, now you're your own keeper. Amen? So as we close, I want you to just think about that. Think about that fellowship with God. Think about Jesus saying, my sheep, hear my voice. Can you hear his voice? Now God can speak to you in a different way than he speaks to someone else. Some people, it could be an audible voice. For other people, it's an internal voice. It's an inner knowing. But I'm telling you, every one of God's sheep, amen, will hear his voice. Why? Because he said it. My sheep. The only way that you won't hear God's voice is what? Huh? There it is. If he says, my sheep hear my voice, then the only way I ain't hearing his voice is I ain't his sheep. Oh. Now that's a challenge. Maybe you say, oh, I don't hear God's voice. No, you hearing something. Now once again, it's not always, you know, an audible voice. or this. No, you're going to know. It's going to be God. It'll be that sometimes God will say something to you and you know. And then we've all been there with, man, it seemed like you just knew something, man. That's God. Learn how to tap into that and stay in that place of fellowship with him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Amen. So God's got a timing, a divine timing for all of us. And this is the key to us going from glory to glory and not going backwards. You don't want to be going backwards in your life. You want to be going forward. You want to be going from glory to glory to glory. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, let's, let's close out in prayer tonight. Father, we just thank you for blessing us, giving us a chance to receive your word. We're going to continue to trust you and we're believing, God, that we're going to get closer and closer to you with every day you give us. Maybe you're watching this right now and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We, we want to invite you into this relationship. It all starts with you just saying yes. And then there's a wonderful uh, experience that you will have. It'll be a, a journey. And we gave you the scripture where Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So just... Repeat this church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. 
I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord, amen.